Hey everybody, welcome to another World Series episode of Fill the Mic. I, as always, am Darren Michael, and with me, the man broadcasting today from Houston, where he will be representing Phil and the Mike, throwing out the first ball in the World Series game tonight, Mr. Phil Cleese. Phil, how excited are you that you were asked to throw out the first pitch tonight? And, and I am excited. Of course, who wouldn't be excited? It's an incredible honor. But in addition to that, what you didn't mention is that accompanying me to the mound to throw out the first pitch will be Mattress Mac, the famous guy in Houston who bets like $8 trillion on every game and then ties it to some mattress giveaway to his community. You so know, it's, me it's and old Mac will yeah. be on the mat. I might just throw off of a, I don't know, a, a good sleep number 97. I don't know, whatever they call those mattresses, sleep number well, or whatever. <laughs> you know, you know what he, what he said, first off, he bet $10 million before the season started. And if he wins, he wins 75 million, which is I think the biggest payout in the history of, uh, of betting. But the interesting thing is that that $75 million is earmarked to give back to customers that spent at least $3,000 on a mattress with him. Is that what it is? Okay, nice. So well, I'm going to get to meet him, you know, I'm going to get to meet him uh, tonight. So it'll it's be exciting. Fun. I look forward to hearing all, all about that. But, you know, his thought is, hey, you know what? I bet $10 million. I'm going to I'm going to take back my initial investment. The rest of it is just extra. I mean, listen, would you buy a mattress from this guy if every year he's he's making this enormous bet and you've got a chance to to get your mattress for free? I mean, I guess. Yeah, why not? Sounds amazing. It's it's a good marketing ploy. So I don't so, buy mattresses that often, but if I was in the yearly business of buying a mattress, he'd be my man. Absolutely. So really quickly, before we get into everything, I just wanted to uh, to tell you about something that I did. I, I went out with uh, with a, a friend of mine, Kevin, the other night. We uh, we were hanging out, drinking a couple of beers. And the place that we went to, it's a place that I've driven by like a thousand times, but never been in, right? It's, it's this place called Dancing Skulls. It's, you know, and, and you think, what? when you think Skulls for the name of a restaurant, what kind of food do you think it is? <laughs> the way you started, it made me think of the Coming to the Mer coming to America line. And he's like, when you think of garbage, think of Akeem. <laughs> but no, you see like all these like, these like cool looking skulls. I mean, to me, that screams Mexican, right? I got to be honest and say I didn't place that in my mind initially. All right. You're so gay. But anyway, it doesn't make a difference. That's what it screams. And it's it's got like it's like Indian infused food. It's the, it's the really same. but that anyway, I don't associate at all. So. Right. I, I didn't see that coming. And you walk inside. It's, it, it looks like it used to be a Mexican restaurant. And when you walk okay. inside, it kind of looks like the old restaurant. But okay. anyway, anyway, yeah. so it's, it's very, very strange. And so we went and just so happens that it was open mic night for comedians. And so everybody, so the funny thing was that of all the people that were in there, there were about a, a massive 20 people in there. I would say 18 of them were comedians going to the open mic. And then there was uh, my friend and I, which I thought was pretty funny, but it's five minute comedy. And I came okay. home and I said, to, I said to my wife, I'm like, you know what? You think you could do it? I think I can do it. I think so. I wanted to ask you, do you think I'm funny enough? You think I can come up with enough material in five in five minutes to actually make people laugh? Because let's be honest, the people that were up there, they were really bad. So the question to me is, Darren, the question to me is, could you come up with five minutes of material? Yes. But the the, the real question is, could you deliver said material funny enough to get enough chuckles? That, that I'm not sure about. But you know what? That but I, I can think do. you could prepare. I think your preparation skills would enable you to find five minutes of funny material. Yes. Listen, when when we go when we go to events and we're vendors and they allow the vendor to to stand up and introduce themselves and talk about stuff, I'm always the one that does it, and I always get a laugh. People always laugh at whatever I come up with. Is so it a nervous laugh, or are they actually laughing? I think they're actually laughing. So right. I can I can deliver the lines. You I can, can deliver, deliver the goods. You're Vince it's, Vaughn in Wedding Crashers. It's the yes. It's it's the question is, can I put together enough funny stuff? Five, five minutes. Yeah, I think you could. Yeah, but but you have to keep something in mind. And and part of the problem with these jokes and why it wasn't funny is because some of these jokes take a while to put together, you know, if you're telling a story or whatever, I mean, you sure. only have five minutes. Yeah. I mean, that's so, one, that's one joke. If it's, if it's a, a long winded, right. 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 So, I mean, so that's what I was thinking of and I'm, and I'm trying to put it together, but 
Um, I started coming up with some ideas and I'm like, yeah, is this funny? Is this you want to run something by me? You want to run something by our audience on live uh, on the spot? I'm not going to because uh, most of the stuff I've come up with is really dirty. <laughs> really? You don't have a PG joke? It doesn't. It, it, it... <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of it a lot of it stems from oh okay i'll give you one i'll give you one all right and, let's, let's, and a lot of this i'm trying to take i'm good at, i don't know this for our for our audience i don't i haven't heard this before i'm going to give you my honest reaction right. i'm not going to i'm not going to be unfair to you either way i'm going to be straight down the line let's go and i think i think some of the best jokes are just real things that happen because you know how it is i mean you could sit there for five minutes and just talk about funny things that your kids say Sure. You know, so, so I pick up Aubrey the other day. She is a, she's a freshman in high school. She's a varsity cheerleader. So I pick her up her first day after practice and she, she shows me her schedule and she's got all these games listed. And, and it's interesting because when I was in high school, the JV boys and the varsity boys would play together at the same place. And then the girls would be separate. In this case, the varsity boys and the varsity girls travel together. And the JV girls and JV boys travel together. So it's a little bit different. So she gets in the car and she's like, you know, I thought that I was only going to be cheering for the varsity boys team. That's really what I want to do. I don't want to cheer for the varsity girls team. And I said, you know what? Listen. Seems sexist, but okay. Yeah. Um, I, well, I didn't say that, but I said, you know, you know, it makes sense for you to do that. I mean, just because they're girls doesn't mean they can't get cheerleaders. And she looks at me and she's like, dad, if I cheer for the girls, people are going to think I'm a lesbian. And I'm like, I don't think they're going to think you're a lesbian if you're cheering for the girls basketball team. Let's be honest. So anyway, anyway, so that was uh, that was something that was said. I thought it was kind of funny if I could figure out a way to deliver it better. What do you think? You think I could I might be able to get some laughs out of that? Um, Yeah, but I, I think that's got to be like, you know, not your A material. No, no, but I, I, you know, anyway, anyway. So anyway, so that's you're gonna mix that. In, you're gonna mix that in with some f bombs. It sounds like based on your dirty material. So oh, it that did. one's gonna come out of left field. <laughs> that one's gonna come out of left field. It sounds like I'm trying to think of all kinds of all kinds of different things. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, there's there's all kinds of things that are said. I mean, just just the stuff that goes on in my house, I can. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the stuff that my wife says, I could I could make you know an hour of. So anyway, anyway, let's get into the World Series, man. It's exciting. It's exciting. I mean, who would have saw the number one seed Houston getting to the World Series? I mean, obviously, Mattress Mac, Mattress Mac did, but nobody else, of course. But um, more surprisingly than anything else, of course, is is the Phillies getting there and the way that they've gotten there. And, uh, you know, it's, sorry, I'm groaning because I'm a Mets fan and it's just oh, it's it's, it's got to hurt. It's got to hurt big time. It's painful. You know. Let's let's just talk about this. Let's just talk about the breakdown, quick breakdown between the two. You know, Houston right now is a 61.5% chance winning. The odds are negative 190. That's not means. that big. No, it's not it's not terrible, but explain to people what what that means, negative 190 odds. So everything is based, everything that you read is based on a hundred dollar bet. That's how they kind of look at it. So if you throw if you put a hundred dollars on Houston, I mean if you'd have to bet $190 on Houston. To win a hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Conversely, exactly. you'd have to bet a hundred dollars on the Phillies to win a hundred and ninety dollars. So yeah. hence the Astros are basically a two to one favorite. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. So here's a couple things about the Astros that that makes them the favorite. Their bullpen led the major leagues in ERA. And so far in the playoffs, their bullpen has been just completely, completely lights out. So not only do they have a, a great uh starting pitching staff. Their bullpen is really great too. Mm -hmm. Defensively, these guys are just great. There, there are. I think they were the number two defensive ranked team overall in the majors this year. So they don't make a whole lot of errors. They don't make a whole lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and it's their fourth World Series in six years. So yep. these guys, they know how to get it done. They feel like they belong here, and it should be something that that. That and there's a reason that they're so heavily favored. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Now, the interesting thing about this whole thing, I mean, the, the Houston has not lost a game yet in the playoffs. I mean, they are just red, red hot right now. But Altuve has been, I mean, ice cold, arguably, ice cold. He's arguably one of your your best hitters. Has been a huge liability. This guy, he finally got a hit. I think what in the last game of their last series, 
this guy is not doing anything and they're dominating. So, you know, well, you, you, you put him in there getting, getting some hits and you never know what's going to happen then. I mean, this could be a, a, this could be a quick series. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll poke a little bit of holes in that. So I think Vegas is actually telling you a couple things with that line. I think they're telling you that Vegas thinks this is a term you'll hear in the betting world. Vegas thinks the Phillies are a live underdog. Yeah. They think they're a real game. Cause, cause let's take a step back for just a second outside of the Phillies sweeping the Cardinals two games, obviously then turn it on and beating the Braves in four and then taking care of the Padres in five. So they've only, they've played 11 playoff games Yep. prior to entering the playoffs of 162 games. They were an 87 win team. Yep. yep. They were 87 and 75. Now, obviously that gets thrown out the window. Now it is not relevant because right. they didn't just make the, they did, they snuck in the back door. They got in as the seven seed in the new format, but, or the six seed or whatever it is. But the thing about the Phillies is if you watch the three series, there was almost never a moment where they were in danger of losing any series. That's true. So they didn't just like, yeah, they're this underdog team that, that really, in my opinion, they were the third best team in their own division. And that's not, and they weren't close to being the second best team in their own division. So they were really not competitive at the top level of the national league, specifically the national league East, or obviously the whole national league, but they have dominated in the playoffs and they have done it with the format or the, 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 the setup that, they would have dreamed when they put the team together was going to play out and it really didn't play out over 162 and it has in the playoffs which is they're going to hit a ton of home runs yep yep they have guys that are boppers that don't hit for a high average and they got two pretty much i would consider horses in the rotation that are big time you know 1a 1b type of aces i some people they're not household names Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler but they they they're clearly legitimate top end pitchers yep yep and then the rest of the team though makes like the the expression i would give for the rest of the team is like eh, eh, eh. <laughs> a like, term that you've used quite often yeah, actually. Eh. i mean the defense is maybe below eh. the yeah, yeah. the rest of the off i mean rio multo is a nice player and they got some boppers but is that the type of team that you think goes on and wins it all? Not usually, but no, there's no. enough there that if they all yeah. perform at levels that they could perform at, like Schwarber can be a great player for any one month period. Yeah. He did lead the national league in home runs. So it's not a fluke that he hits home runs. He had 46 yeah. home runs during the regular season. He's hit another seemingly seven or eight in the postseason. I'm making that number up, but it seems like he has. It seems like Har- it, yeah. Harper's hit a bunch of big home runs and big hits. Riamuto's done what he had to do, <clears throat> you know? So it's like, okay. The flip side, if the Astros are to lose, in my opinion, yeah, because they've been an amazing team, and this isn't just this year, this is the last six years. They've been to six straight ALCSs. They've been to four World Series now, right, in six years. That's right. They've only won one, though. One for three, right? One for three. And they're, they were favorites in the two they lost. Yep. They were favorites over the Braves last year because, as I tried to remind my sons the other day, the Braves didn't win a hundred games last year. The Braves were more a little bit like the Phillies this year in that yeah. they were an 88, whatever win team, and then picked them off in the world series and got hot. And the nationals the year before also was not a juggernaut when they beat them. That's true. That's true. So the Astros are vulnerable because I think they feel the pressure in the world series. They yep. need to take a second ring. They need, yep. need a, they need to bring a second one home. And so I think the Phillies are playing loose. They're playing behind a raucous crowd that's just hungry. Yeah, yeah. And and they got nothing to lose. I know you're in the World Series, you don't want to lose, but but they have nothing to lose comparatively to the Astros. The yeah. Astros really need a second championship to solidify this, because then they can get you start using the D word at that point, right? You can start looking yeah. at them as a little bit of a dynasty, a little bit yeah, of like a of legacy. Course. If they don't get yeah. a second ring, that can never be talked about. Then they fall more into the Dodgers camp of a team that just didn't win as much as their talent and their regular seasons would have, you know, basically shown they should have won. So yeah, yeah, yeah I think right. it's interesting, but I think this is a series where the Astros play their a game. There's no comparison between the two teams. If the Astros don't and start to feel like, uh Oh, another yeah. national league East team. Cause by the way, all national league East teams have picked them off in the world series. The Braves did it. 
the Nationals did it. Now the Phillies get a chance to do it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they That's might feel point. it. It you know I think a lot's going to determine. I think a lot's going to be determined by game one. The Phillies are so hot. Yeah. The Astros need to smack them and be like, yep. okay, your yep. your runs over. It was Cinder Cinderella lost her slipper. It's over, guys. <laughs> or or the Phillies win game one and it's like, oh my gosh, they are a steamrolling juggernaut. That's just it's their year. It's the Rocky story. Set well, in know, Philly with the real Phillies. Yeah, you know, a cu- couple things that I think are really interesting. For one, I mean, it seems like the championship series ended like months ago. Yeah, I don't like you know? the four. They four more days off, but what they can't is, change the dates. So I mean, it's it's yeah. I mean, I guess you can't, but it's it's unbelievable. It's just it seems so strange. It's, it's like a weird a lull. lull. It's yeah, a, like a like weird I'm, lull. I'm waking up in the morning. I'm like, when the hell is this? Is this World Series going to start? You know, so I agree with you. It's starting, but something else that I heard that was really fascinating to me, and 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 I don't know. I mean, it, it just it doesn't even seem like it makes any sense. This is the first team since I want to say like 1960 in which there are no black U.S. born players on either roster. I, I saw that. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that odd? like you wouldn't think that, right? I mean, it's just no, it's just but odd. but it didn't shock me as much as like when it was said. What shocked me more was the stat you read, which was it's the first time since 1960. Yeah, that shocks me more because the game has moved away from the the great black athlete, and it's not it's not that it. And by the way, this isn't like everybody makes everything out to be like if you talk about race or you talk about it, I observing something somehow it's like weirdly racial. It's it's just an observation. Yeah, yeah. The great black athlete has steered clear of baseball. I know I've heard people say Mm -hmm. like MLB doesn't do a, a great enough job marketing it into the big cities and things like that. But at the end of the day, baseball is not a sport that Mm -hmm. I think a great athlete necessarily gravitates to and it has nothing to do with race. I think it has to do with, it's a much longer grind to get there in it to get to the major leagues. It's years of toiling in the minors. Almost always it's either deciding the college path or then the minor path or both. Right. It's, it's, it's just a different type of sport, basketball and NFL, the gratification comes so much more immediately. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And it's also, you know, all over TV. It's more glamorized. Baseball's a grind. You know, it's, it's just a different perspective. And I just think a lot of the great athletes, which happen to be black in the United States, have just not wanted to play baseball. You know, yeah, not, that they, not that they couldn't be just as good or better than they were oh, yeah. under the Willie Mays era. Or, you know, I just think baseball was the sport yeah. for a long time. So everyone wanted to play it. The best of the best in every race, creed, society wanted to play it. Now it's, it's the third sport in terms of glamour. I not mean, I mean, in think, terms think, of, you know, to me, that's not the third the, best sport. But no, no. Think think about all the all the big sports out there, right? You get drafted into a sport, or you sign on a sport. You're playing professional. You know, you're playing in the big leagues. I mean, you know, whereas baseball you're in the minors for years i mean no nobody everybody if, plays in the minors if it's you're like a great athlete play. and you go play college basketball you only have a one-year commitment and you can go right to the nba and that's getting ready to get changed right to out of high school again that is getting and ready. if you're the great and if you're the great college uh football player or if you're the great football player yes you do have to sit three years in college but college yeah. football first of all now you get paid to do it pretty handsomely yeah. so no issue there and secondly, you're playing in front of 90,000 seat stadiums on national TV every week. So there's a glamorization of that where it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I got to do a three year period to get there. But it's it's at it's, it's in glamour. Go yeah. to the minor leagues in baseball as an 18 year old to like, you know, Biloxi, Mississippi in front I'm of 700 people. Yeah. It's not yeah. glamorous. Or even if you play college baseball and unless you're talking about maybe one of the five big programs, the LSUs, the Texases, what have you, yeah. you're mostly playing in front of 500, a thousand people. Yeah. A few of these big programs pack out their five to 7,000 seat stadiums, yeah. Yeah. but you know, that's it. So there's just, it's just not as, it's not a sexy sport for the coming up ranks until no, you make it to the majors. It's true. It's true. So let's hear your prediction. What do you got for the world series? I can't pick the Phillies. <laughs> um, I am extremely nervous that the Phillies are going to pull this off. I will say that. I think they are a true live underdog. Yeah. And I'm going to yeah. stick to this point. Game one is going to, for me, game one is going to tell me who wins the series. 
Yeah. Whoever wins games game one is going to win the series. That's my true, honest opinion. And that's not always the case in a seven-game series. But I think the Phillies, if they go to Houston and win game one, are not coming off this high of what they've been on. And if the Astros win game one, I think it resets the Phillies back to you're the underdog for a reason. Yeah. We're the best team. You've made it as far as you're going to make it. And now this is our time to win our second ring. You don't yeah. even belong here and they're going to beat them up and that's going to be it. And it's going to be a quick series. So my opinion is I'll go Astros in five. Astros in five. Wow. Wow. And that's not because I don't think the Phillies are a live underdog. I just think it either ends pretty quick with the Astros winning or it goes really long and the Phillies win. That's kind of how I think of it. So. Yeah, you know, and I I look at this and I see the Phillies and 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 I'm thinking to myself, okay, they're about to face Justin Verlander. I mean, this is a this is a a first ballot Hall of Famer. This is a guy that's about to lock up his third Cy Young award. And at 38 years old, he literally just had his most dominant season. His ERA was what 1.8 this year. His WHIP not had a good postseason though. Point eight. He's had a his last outing pitched six innings, no runs, eleven strikeouts. So, you know, I think he's going to turn it on. I think he's going to be dominant. I don't think they're going to be able to hit him. But I think that the Phillies are going to do a little bit better than what you're saying. I'm going Houston in six. I think Mattress Ma- Mattress Mac is on to something, and I think they're they're going to beat him. But I think. I think there's going to be some some close games. I think it's going to be a good series. I don't think it's going to be a bunch of five nothing victories. Um, I think that it'll probably be lower scoring. I think that that Houston will be able to keep the 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 Phillies bats in check. Um, I think they're going to hit a few solo home runs here and there, but I think for the most part, it's uh, you know it's 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 Houston raising the flag once again, second time in four years, and like you said beginning of of a dynasty you know you look back at the braves who won like 15 division titles in a row you never think of them as a dynasty they only won one ring that's it so like you said these guys they have to win another ring to show that they're for real you know these teams can get to the world series if they but can they win that's and that's what matters at the end of the day nobody cares if you get there so Anyway, anyway, so good stuff, good stuff. I wanted to just briefly touch. I have two questions for you on college bat on college football, really quickly. Mm-hmm. First question is number seven, Old Miss gets just beat up by LSU, right? They're up 20 to 17 and a half. They lose 45 to 20. Mm-hmm. So LSU just turned it on in the second half. What do you think this says about the football rankings and the SEC? I know you're I know you talk about that all the time. How I mean I mean, really? I mean, I mean, the seventh ranked team in the country gets destroyed by an un unranked team. Yeah, I mean, if you remember though, we talked about the joke being that LSU was favored in the game, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Vegas, Vegas knows. Vegas knows. I don't know how. Um, yeah. Um, no, I mean, listen, what it, it's it's a little bit of a wacky year. Um, there's so few undefeated teams yeah. already. Yeah. There's lots of good, lots of quote unquote good teams with already two losses. You know, Alabama could have lost three games already. It's a little bit of a, a weird year. Um, yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't, in conference matchups like LSU at home, we know, I think you always look at it. And this is why LSU gets some of the, you know, credit or, or what have you. But some of these teams, we know, we know LSU has more five star recruits than Mississippi. We know there's talent at LSU where if it all yep. comes together, we see this all the time, right? Yep. And and Brian Kelly is a good coach. He he's won everywhere he's been. So like he got made fun of and what have you, or this and that, because he faked the southern accent and he acted all weird going to LSU. But at the end of the day, <laughs> the guy can coach. I mean, Notre Dame was yeah, a very, yeah. very good winning program under him. And all of the previous schools he's went to have been it's winning true. programs. The it's odds true. that he was going to a five-star um a five-star academy of a school in LSU with NIL money and not going to win yeah, is yeah. insane. Like he's a good yeah, coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not shocked that LSU turned it on and blew out a team that was quote unquote ranked seventh. Uh, it's not that shocking. I, I don't, I don't think it, it, it's just, you know, but, but like we've said, I mean, they, they shouldn't have, they shouldn't have rankings at all. It, it just, well, yeah. No, it, it's, you know, Listen. And it's just, it's just, it's a bunch of crap. You know, if you win games, it doesn't matter if they're close games or what you're, you're going to keep going down in the rankings. 
But yeah. anyway, anyway, so so my the other game that I want to touch on was Oregon. Oregon beat uh, a surprising undefeated UCLA 45 to 30. Oregon was, I mean, Oregon, just from the beginning, I mean, they were just crushing. It was 31 to 13 at the half, and they never looked back. So here's my question about Oregon. Oregon, after that, I mean, you remember the first game of the season where they lost 49 to 3 versus UGA, and you thought, wow, this Oregon team is terrible. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but I think what people have forgotten is, one, they're in the Pac-10 which means that they always have a shot no matter what they do outside the Pac-10. Mm -hmm. They've won six straight games, and they only have one difficult game coming up, and that's against Utah, which is probably still a winnable game. So the question is, you know, if this team ends up running the table the rest of the way, they win the Pac-10 championship as some of these other teams lose because we know – Georgia, Tennessee play, so one of those teams is going to lose. We know Michigan, Ohio State play, so one of those teams are going to lose. So potentially Oregon could leap over those teams. So you're you're the committee. You're looking at this. Can you honestly put a team into the four-game playoff that I lost, lost by 46. 46 points to Georgia but ran through the rest of the Pac-10? I mean, are you going to – are you going to kind of disqualify them because the Pac-10 is just not a great conference? No, and you know what's going to help Oregon? Most likely they're going to play – I should probably do my homework before I say this, but I think I'm right. Um, they're going to end up probably having to beat USC, right, in the championship? Yeah. yeah. So if – in the Pac-12 championship, I mean. So if, if USC is sitting there in the top, you know, 8 to 10, and they're able to pick off a top 10 team – at the end of the season, yeah. that'll go a long way towards helping them, you know, with, with the perception, right? Because they don't really have a, a signature win. No, they don't. No. Not, not they don't have. They don't have a signature win. No, no. So um, I think they would need, if they're going to be a Final Four team with that bad of a loss, although it helps them that it was back, you know, a long time ago, um, A, I think they need Georgia to be undefeated at the end of the year, right? Because if Georgia has a loss at the end of the year, Georgia will be the team that stays ahead of them. Yep. So they need Georgia to lose a game. I mean, to go undefeated. So they're number one. So they could at least say they lost to the number one team. And then I think they need USC to keep climbing the ranks and get to the top six, seven, eight, and then beat them in the Pac-12 championship. And I think if that, if all that happens, there'll be some push to say like, hey, a Pac-12 team hasn't been in the playoffs in a while. There'll be yeah. some sentiment that rises up to say, all right, their only loss was a really long time ago. Maybe. I think then it would be like, the, you know, then the argument will get down to Oregon versus a second SEC team. Yeah. That's yeah. what it'll get down to. But yeah, Oregon I, will at least have a case by then if they have just beaten a top six or eight USC team. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. It It, it could be a, it could be an interesting, uh, interesting way to finish off the season. So we'll get into, uh, we'll get into your predictions in, in just a bit, but I wanted to go through a few NFL tidbits and see your thoughts on these. Now, once again, everybody, I have not told Phil. This is how good the guy is. Wait, hold on. You don't want me to do college football picks first before we go to NFL? Do you, uh, it's up to you. Do you want to do picks now? Yeah, let's wrap uh, Let's right. wrap college football in a bow. All right. Well, we'll... well, let's let's just talk about uh, how you did last week with your big three. All right. So you had, you had Syracuse plus 14, which you won. Uh, you had UCLA plus six and a half versus Oregon, which you lost. Yep. And your, your lock of the week was number two Ohio State twenty nine and a half over Iowa. So you, you went two and one last week. You are still doing really really well with college football. You're fourteen six and one, and uh, four and three in your uh, your best bets of the yep. week blocks of the week. Impressive, impressive. Yep. Fourteen six and one is is just six and one. It's Daddy, unbelievable. I wish you're making your NFL a couple picks. of bucks. Daddy yeah. more bucks right now. Yeah. So, so what do you think in this week? I haven't even looked at the games this week. So, yeah. I mean, are there any good games going on this week? There's, there's a few. There's a few games that have you know two ranked teams matching up. There's actually okay. three. There's three games. So I picked two of them because I, I want to pick a best bet that's not connected to that. Okay. So we'll go with probably the two best games of the week in terms of rankings. First game is a. It seems like a lot of good games are at the noon kickoff, but the noon kickoff, you got Ohio State traveling to Penn State, probably a raucous atmosphere. They'll probably have a whiteout or a blackout because I think in Happy Valley, they only know two colors, white or black. They try to keep it simple for those students. Bring white, bring black. So it'll probably be a whiteout, I'm assuming. 
Okay. Um, Penn State's a raucous place to play. Probably yeah. less raucous at noon than it would be at 8 p.m., you know, with 64 beers in you. But it'll still be a raucous place to play. Um, Ohio State's laying 15 and a half. Yeah. So it's a lot of points. But it's not too many points not to take them. <laughs> so because – Penn State is ranked 13th and they're six and one, but to me, that's not really a real ranking. Yeah. They have exactly zero good wins on their schedule. The win over Auburn, which did look impressive at the time, Auburn's horrible. Yep. So yep. in retrospect, it's not even a good win because they're just a bad team. Yeah. And they got and they got the doors blown off them by Michigan earlier in the year. So like in they really haven't. This is a this is a step. This isn't a step up. This is five steps up for them. And playing at home isn't going to save this game. So to me, this is a blowout. Okay. Um, so I'll take Ohio State, lay 15 and a half. Okay. The, the other two – so I could have went Oklahoma State, Kansas State, but to be perfectly honest, I don't even care about either of those teams at all. So I'm going to skip that ranked matchup. And I'll go to Tennessee against Kentucky, which is a night kickoff. So this will be raucous. I don't know if they put the goalpost back. They did a GoFundMe because apparently their six billion dollar endowment's not enough to cover some goalposts, so they had to go GoFundMe to get a new goalpost. That makes um, sense. So here's my thing. Here's my angle on this game. They come off the big win over Alabama, then they play their sister school, UT Martin, Tennessee State, Wichita Bears, or whatever they're called, and they whatever they win by fifty or whatever they win by. Next week they play Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a look ahead game. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a classic trap game and a look ahead game. I don't care what that coach is telling them. And I know Kentucky's ranked 19th, but they're two and two in the SEC. Mm -hmm. They're five and two, which means if I looked at their schedule, they have zero good wins, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. And they're they're not a real five. This is an SEC ranked team. Like when you yeah. say teams get ranked in the SEC, Kentucky's not a really good ranked team, in my opinion. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But I just think it's a look ahead game. And I think I'm going to take Kentucky getting 11 and a half because Tennessee is dying to go to Georgia and try to show now that they're just the behemoths on the block. And I think this is the game that they get caught looking ahead to. Maybe they hold off and win a close one, but I think this is a game they find themselves life or death to, to, to win, let alone cover. I think this game ends up being like 38, 35. And I yeah. think Tennessee survives this game. Interesting. So I'm going to take Kentucky. Plus okay. 11 and a half. Okay. And my best bet is I'm going to go – now, USC took a loss, and USC now needs to run the table, right? They took a loss by one point at Utah. Yep. A tough place to play. Yeah. A yeah. really tough place to play. They lo lose by a point at Utah. Yeah. Other than that, they've had a really good season. Obviously, um, the, the coach and all the people he brought over is making the difference why it's not a rebuild. It's just a, you know, they're just, they just took everyone off other teams and they're just yeah. rolling. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think they beat the doors off Arizona. So my best bets, USC minus 14 and a half. Cause now this is the perfect coach to run up the score on everyone where that are inferior. Cause he likes to run up the score anyway. So I think they just start beating the doors off people to try to get back into the college football playoff conversation and set up an eventual matchup with Oregon where maybe the winner does make the playoff. So, yeah. Yeah. cause USC is kind of now forgotten about, but they really shouldn't be because that yeah. loss isn't going to change a lot. If they're going to go run the table now and win the PAC 12, they got a shot at getting in the playoff. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to go with USC lay 14 and a half as my best bet. All right. Sounds and like a plan, man. That's what I got. I like that. I like that. I like that. All good stuff. All good stuff. I want to uh, just quickly, I know we spend a lot of time on baseball today. I want to just quickly go through a few, uh, just a few tidbits about uh, about the NFL and get your thoughts. So I know normally I don't talk about this week. I don't want to talk about last week's game, but since it is Friday, I want to talk about a little bit about the Bucks and uh, and last night they lost to the Ravens. Yep. Which, uh, which you and I kind of talked about. You insisted that the Bucks were going to win. I insisted the Ravens were going to win. And um, let me tell you something. I walked downstairs this morning. My father-in-law is staying with us this weekend, and the first thing he said to me was, "I bet you're going to have fun making fun of Phil for picking <laughs> for picking the wrong team last night." Mm. And I'm like, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say a word. But the Bucks fall to three and five. And you, did, you did kind of say a few words, by the way. I mean, I did. I did off the air. But uh, the Bucks fall to three and five. So it, the interesting thing is it's the first time probably in Tom Brady's entire football 
career, his entire life, that he's been two games under 500. So here's the question, yeah. man. We know Todd Bowles really well as Jets fans. Mm-hmm. How can Todd Bowles turn this thing around? And then question number two, which is a little bit different, does this guy really have any business being a head coach? I mean, listen, I he he wasn't a good head coach, right? I mean, no, he wasn't, he wasn't at all. Um, he wasn't at all. I think everybody should get a second crack at it. I mean, you know, I, I'm okay with that. He's not a head coach. I don't think they're going to fire him in the middle of this season, but I think they actually might gain a spark out of doing it. But I will say this if I was defending, not Todd Bowles, but if I was just kind of defending where they're at, they're, they're, they're beat up with injuries. They are. They, they, if you can't, their offensive line is not great. And now they just lost Shaq Barrett for the year. He tore his ACL. So this could, the only thing that's going to save them is the division so bad. What's the, (laughs) what's the, what's the division winner going to get to eight wins? Like, are they going to be eight and nine? I mean, I don't see any of these other teams going nine and eight even. So like the Saints, the Panthers, the this one, the that, like yeah. it's such a bad division that, I mean, the Bucks might still win the division. Yeah. They really might. I, I know mean, there's three, know. three and five in a lot of divisions. You're already out, but three and five in this division, you're a game out of first. So I don't know. I, I think, you know, listen, t- divorce doesn't agree with Tom Brady though. That's for sure. No, no, it definitely doesn't. And if you think about it, you know, if, if the Falcons lose this weekend, then the Bucks are still in first place at three and five. Right. So, and, and if the if the Panthers win this weekend, they're all three and five. Yeah, I know, right? And the Saints. And the, so, yeah, it's it's just it's a pathetic division. Uh, yeah. But yeah, they got they got to figure out how to write the ship because they're just they're just playing. Just, and I don't know if there's a writing of the ship. There I don't may not be. This might be it, man. And I, you know, maybe maybe Tom's wife comes back to him and says, "Listen, you suck ass." come back to the family. Maybe he retires in the middle of the season. I mean, who the hell knows? You think possibly she picks up the phone? Da, 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 da. <laughs> this is even embarrassing for me to watch. Stop playing your little making football. Making fun of you, but now this is, this is garbage. <laughs> you come back to the Tampa house. We make it work for eight more weeks. Stop embarrassing me. <laughs> what, now, what, what, what they don't know is that the real reason that she's divorcing him is because the team sucks. She's like, I cannot be with loser, you know. So, you are anyway. a loser. You are anyway, anyway, let's uh, let's move on. So the Colts lose to the Titans. The Colts are now three, three and one. Matt Ryan gets benched for Sam Ellinger. Who the hell is Sam Ellinger? We know who he is. Sammy Ells. Is this a good move? And what do you think this says to the team and the fans? You know, this is the second straight year you brought in a, a high prof- profile free agent. That's just not been good. Yeah, I mean, well, it's not the second year even. I think it's like they've been doing that. They really have been doing this since Andrew Luck was like, uh, I'm going to retire. I'm going <laughs> to stop playing football at 25. Yeah, but but this is no, but this is the second time they brought in like a like a legitimate. Yeah, but they change quarterbacks name. like we change socks. They just keep yeah. bringing in guys every year. It's Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not good for continuity. It's not. Listen, I, I think it's a quick trigger. Honestly, I yeah. think it's a quick trigger. I think it's an unnecessary quick trigger because it's also a, a winnable division. Yeah. And yeah. and Sam Ellinger, I mean, you're trying to tell me he can't sit for at least a few more weeks while you see if Matty Ice can figure it out. I mean, the guy's got like a 15 year track record. Yeah. yeah. So it seems like a little bit of a quick trigger to me, but it does. It does. And you're you're pulling him out for a guy. I mean, has Ellinger even played? No, I mean, and maybe it'll work, Ellinger, but like you could wait a couple more weeks. They're not one and five. What are they, <laughs> three, three and one or something? Three, three, and one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like right. the division, and and they're playing who this week? They're playing in-state rival Tennessee. I uh, know that was last week. I'm not sure who they're playing this week. You'll have to look it up. Yeah, I'll look it up. But um, yeah, but I mean, they they lost to an in-state rival. I mean, not in-state in uh, in conference rival Tennessee last week. Who's who's been turning it back on and is actually oh, and they're playing the commanders so they could easily be four three and one after this week. So. Oh, easily. And yeah, they should they should be four three and one. So I don't know what's going on, but we'll see. We'll see. Good good luck for uh for your boy Sam. I know you guys are really close and and I uh, wish him all the best. Um, another question I got for you. The Bengals, they start off the season 0 and 2. Everybody is like, oh my God, these guys went to the Super Bowl. Now they're terrible. Well, they've won four out of five. And so now they're they're four and three. They're um 
their losses have come by three points, three points, and two points. I mean, this is a this is a team that could be undefeated. That's probably as good as they were last year. Here's the challenge. Jamar Chase, they just announced he's out four to six weeks. Nice things for the Bengals. Their next four games at Cleveland, home versus Carolina, at Pittsburgh, at Tennessee, all winnable games. Do you think that they can win four games without him? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They could. They won't, but they could, yeah. Because you got the quarterback. The quarterback could figure it out. Um, but I don't I don't love them as much this week coming up as I did. I well, think the first fun. week's a little tricky, you know, when yeah. you got your stud receiver out. I think he'll figure it out because Burrow's a good quarterback. But the Bengals were just because they were 0 and 2, they're they're fine. The Bengals are yeah. good. Yeah. If you got your quarterback, you always got a shot. Yeah. That's yeah. how I look at it. If you got your quarterback. And they, they do have other weapons. They you do. Know, T, T. Higgins is a great player and, and Boyd. Uh, you know, they've got they've got Boyd, the, Boyd, the Boyd, Boyd's leading the team in 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 uh reception. Yeah, Boyd's done it. Boyd, Boyd's having yeah. a good year too. So yeah. So uh last thing I want to mention. Jets lose their budding superstar mm. Reed Hall. I mean, this thing, as Jet fans, I know how much this this thing hurts. What do we want to expect from their pickup? They went out right away and they picked up another starting running back, which was pretty impressive. James Robinson. What what should we expect from this guy? And is he going to be an adequate replacement for the rest of the year? Well, keep in mind, Michael Carter is still probably the one. Right, right. You do, you do have Michael Carter still, right? But you know they've they've enjoyed <laughs> this two headed monster, and they've yeah. had a lot of success with it, especially with Brees coming into his own. He's not Brees Hall. Um, Brees Hall's a, another level. He's he was going to be just the numbers he was going to put up at the end of the year if he would have stayed healthy was going to be very impressive. Yeah. yeah. So he's not Brees Hall, but it is a nice pivot off of like losing a major contributor. At least you bring a solid back into the fold. Yep. And I think James Robinson at his age and everything is a nice addition for yeah. a fifth or a sixth, whatever they gave up. I think it's, yeah. it'll be a fifth after all said and done. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it was a good move for the Jets. Um, the big rumor is, by the way, so I think Robinson helps the Jets. I, I do think it's a big loss, and I'm not going to downplay. Brees Hall was a monster. Yeah, um, yeah. I th- there's a big rumor that the Jets are working on trying to bring Laramie Tunzel, the big offensive tackle from the Texans, over. Oh, wow. In, in, a, in a big trade because they, they really are trying to shore up the line and, and yeah. give themselves a chance to win this year. So now, that, let me ask you a question. I'm, I'm a little nervous about that guy. Is he still uh, smoking marijuana? Yeah, but now it's all legal, so it's all good. Inside one of those, uh, what what was he wearing? Some kind of like scuba yeah. mask or something. Looked like a damn hazmat outfit, whatever the hell he had on. He's 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 a good player. He's a really good player. Yeah, the weed the weed has done him okay. It'd be a good uh, be a good pickup. Let's. It's time to give out your game ball, and I'm gonna okay. give you I'm gonna give you a few guys that had some that had some good weeks. Number one, Joe Burrow. This guy was over 300 yards in the first half. He was playing lights out. 34 for 42, 481 yards, three touchdowns, 138.2 rating in a 35 to 17 win over Atlanta. Choice number two, Kenneth Walker, the, I don't know what he is, the eighth, which I really love this guy in college. And uh, it's about time he got a, uh, he got a, a, a chance in Seattle. I mean, it's really exciting. 23 carries, 167 yards, two touchdowns, average 7.3 yards a carry, including a long of 74 yards in a Seattle surprising beatdown, 37 to 23 of the LA Chargers. And then the third one is the combination of Boyd and Chase, who combined in the Bengals' victory had 16 receptions for 285 yards and three touchdowns. Who are you giving your game ball to this week, Lumpy? I'll give it to the the man, the Joe Burrow, the Joe Burrow and the Bengals getting them back on track. I'll give it to Joe. Yeah, Burrow's Burrow's playing. Uh, Burrow's playing really well. So I, I agree with that, man. I think that's a good call. And and uh, your boy Joe is is uh, is really picking up where he left off last year, and really really got this team uh, this team humming. Yep. Time for my favorite part of the show. Fill up your bank account now. Dude, you are you're eleven and ten, three and three on the season. So you're right, you're hovering right around five hundred. So you'd be like number one at the New York Post right now. But I know I'm plotting along this year. Certainly, <laughs> certainly, you'd want to be more relying on the college football, which has been much better than the pro. I mean, I mean, listen, man. But I'm holding my own. I'm not embarrassing myself. Listen, last week you you know you won. You had Las Vegas minus seven over Houston. You won that. You had Pittsburgh plus seven and a half at Miami. You won that. Chiefs at 49ers, you had 49ers plus one, and they just got absolutely obliterated. And then your lock of the week 
which <laughs> listen, we all thought that this was the lock. Yeah. Let's be honest. I mean, New England minus seven and a half, and they lose by nineteen to a god awful Bears team. Yeah, so, that one's a, that was a shocker. That, that really was. I mean, I I can't even put that <laughs> on because on paper, on plastic, on whatever, on any surface, it looks like this thing is a blowout. But in, uh, maybe New England has shown their true colors, and now they're having all kinds of quarterback controversy there. And they've got two quarterbacks that turns out really aren't very good. So can you yes. redeem yourself this week? That's the big question, and what are we doing? All right. So there's a lot of lower spreads this week because there's a lot of just – it's a little bit of a, a week where, you know, this, it's a little tricky. I didn't find this to be overly um, easy, easy games to identify. But – I'm still identifying them. So here we go. <laughs> All right. First game. I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with the team that I just think is the, the much better team. Yeah. And it's a low spread, which gives me concern. Cause again, Vegas always seems to know more than we do, but mm -hmm. I'm going to take the Titans two and a half points favorite at the Texans. Um, listen, if the Titans are going to win this division, this is kind of a game they have to win. This is a yep. super winnable game. Yep. I don't care if this is a division game or not, whatever. They're just – they're not very good. Um, so I think they need to take care of this <laughs> this game. I mean, it's just not. The Texans aren't a good team. Yeah. yeah. Um, the next game, and this goes – let me. I'm looking here one time, two times. Yeah, I, I went down the road of picking the Jets a couple times this this year. I'm one and one picking the Jets. Um I wanted to stay away from this game and then more as it's gotten closer to kickoff, I'm going to gravitate towards it. The jets are getting two and a half at home. It's going to be a raucous crowd. I mean, MetLife stadium, well, jet fans have been waiting 10 years to have a good team. Yeah. Um, yeah. The quarterback situation shaky for the Patriots. I know Mac Jones has been named the starter. Um, the jet defense should light him up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's not very mobile. He's not immobile. He's not Joe Flacco, but he's, he's, <laughs> He's fairly immobile. Yeah, the Jets yeah. have a really good pass rush that come at you in waves with basically yeah. a backup unit that that does pretty good themselves to give yeah. the, the, the yeah. front unit a break. They do get Jermaine Johnson back, the rookie, I think, the Jets. But my concern with this game is the offense. And yeah. it's not just Zach Wilson. It's can they hold up? He was hurried 14, 14 times last week. Um, they got to be able to hold up and give him a chance. And the game plan's got to be such that – they actually let him get the ball out of his hands and get it to Moore, get it to Wilson. Like none of these like 53 step drops, like just get rid of the ball there. You got playmakers. Now yep. these guys can all take a three yard pass and go 20 or 50 or 60. So like, yep. just get them the ball. So that's another thing. Um, so we'll see, but I'll take the Jets plus two and a half. Okay. Um, the next game, again, it's like one of those games where I'm trying to make sense of it. I, I want to, I want to not like it because they changed quarterbacks, but I actually think they're going to get a little bit, at least for a week, they're going to get a little bit of a burst. And I'm going to take the Colts minus three over the commanders. I, I just, I'm not a, I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a commander guy. I hate the name and I don't like the team even more. So <laughs> um, I'm going to take the Colts at home where they still got everything to play for. I know they switched quarterbacks, but maybe Ellinger gives them a shot in the arm. They got weapons on that team and they yeah. got a great running back. Yeah. So I'm going to go with the Colts. And then my, my best bet is this is the only game I actually feel good about. Honestly, everything else I think is a little bit of a coin toss. My best bet is the Vikings at home. They're laying three and a half at home against the Cardinals. Um, I, I, I just like the Vikings at home. I, I don't always like the Vikings, but at home against a very mediocre Cardinals team, I think is a good bet only laying yeah. three and a half. So I'm going to take the Vikes as my best bet. Good. And I picked four games again. So I'm really trying to go at least three and one to start, you know, getting a little distance over 500 here. That's yeah. My hope. Yeah. You got to do something. And you know what, on paper, I mean, it looks like, it looks like you made some good picks here. We'll see. I can't, I can't disagree, man. I like them. So you heard the man first. How much are we betting this week? Um, We're going to bet like, uh, like maybe, you know, uh, I don't want to like, I don't want to say a car payment. Uh, Let's bet. Uh, let's bet a, a month of, uh, Catholic school uh, tuition. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. A month Catholic, Catholic school tuition. I don't know. Or private school tuition if you're not into the Catholic thing. All right. 
All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, well, good picks, man. I, I feel good about this. I, I hope that you, uh, that you can, you can do some good things. I wanted to finish up with just one more thing before, uh, before we head out for the weekend. And that is, I wanted to congratulate Tom Brady who has once again set another all time NFL record. This guy is going to, he is going to own virtually every record in the record book when he is done. And this time Last night, he officially set the all-time NFL record for most times sacked. So congratulations <laughs> to Tom. And uh, although I think that uh, I think he, he's getting sacked at home, too. So he's just he's, he's in a lot of trouble. But um, and it's funny because we talk about how this guy has been untouchable his career, you know, and then, you know, he's the all-time leader at getting sacked. But you got to remember, he's played for 80 years. So, I mean, he's getting sacked twice a season. I mean, there you go. You, your... play, you play you play long enough, you own all the best records and the worst records if you're a great player. That's correct. That's correct. So, so all good stuff. All good stuff. Well, great oh. show again, my friend. I hope everybody enjoys the, uh, the weekend. I know as Jet fans, I know that we are continuously excited about everything. And... Uh, it seems like our team is moving in the right direction. And, and according to you, we're going to beat the uh, the New England Patriots this weekend. So hope everybody enjoys a great football weekend and uh, enjoy the World Series as Phil and I have both decided that uh, Mattress Mac is going to be winning his $75 million. And more importantly, the Astros are going to be winning a second ring in the last four years. So remember, if you like us, keep listening. If you don't, keep listening because maybe you will. If you uh, tell your family. We could grow on you. Tell your neighbors. That's right. That's right. Feels like a rash. It just keeps growing on you. So have a great weekend, everybody. Phil, enjoy. Good seeing you as always. And uh, we'll see you next time on Phil and the Mic. Thanks, everybody.